So next up, I'm excited to bring on Malin Eckengren, who is joining us live from the UK. And uh, there you are, Malin. Can, I, can you hear me? Perfect. Okay. Technical difficulties all gone. Um, so Malin, how are you today? Uh, I'm okay. Thanks for uh, um, bringing me into this event. It's great to be here and great to see Canada. I'm excited to have you here. I, and as I mentioned, this is Malin Eckengren, who is a denim designer and consultant and is currently consulting for Stella McCartney. Um, I was actually, we were talking the other day, I was mentioning that I never see Malin speaking at events, um, but every time I do, I, <laughs> I love what you say and I'm like, why don't you do it more? So, I mean, I know you're a very busy lady and I'm very thankful that you're spending your evening um, with us today. So, um, we're here today to talk about your philosophy of design and right now we're all kind of experimenting with different approaches to sustainability and responsible um, production methods um, but based on your vast experience I'm dying to know how you specifically approach responsible design while still creating such beautiful pieces and garments. Um, well I think responsible denim design approach would be a mix of a lot of things. A lot of things go hand in hand. Uh, I think designers need to be really it sounds really sort of quite uh, about eco create. I think eco creative. We need to eco create. We need to think about the planet with with that mind. We need to have that in our minds when we're designing, and uh, we need to produce garments, especially in denim, uh, with longer lifespan, uh, and start the process, design process, with designing out waste, because the end product is the problem for the moment not only what we design we're just creating more and more so designers need to bear that in mind when they're designing and um, the best way to do that in my opinion is to really start from the beginning in the process use uh, biodegradable fabrics uh, less polyester less petrol less plastic in your garments try to find organic cotton or use more sustainable fibers like natural fibers like linen and hemp, which is really great, especially mixing with cotton. Uh, and then when you go through the process, you really need to look at the sustainable wash techniques, uh, saving water and using, try not to use up too much of the, of the nature we have. Using dead stock fabrics is another way of doing it. Um, most suppliers, most factories have dead stock fabrics that you can use. Um, and when you go back even to fabric production, find the fabrics that are using less energy uh, and use the resources we have uh, much more efficiently, use less to create more and be more creative, I think. Um, creative. Because, yeah, I think uh, we all creatives uh, and this creative industry I'm in, the denim and fashion industry, uh, we really need to work together um, to shift to a circular economy. Yeah. Uh, we have so much knowledge uh, and creativity, both from designers and all the mills and everyone who works in this industry. And we should really all be part about, create this new future uh, with this in mind, I think. Circularity, be creative and sustainability. Um, I think it's really, I, I mean, at least from the, when, how I see the denim industry, it, it is exciting to see that we're all willing to collaborate, which is sometimes not necessarily the case in fashion brands. Um, I think there's a little bit more com competition there, are not willing to cooperate with one another sometimes. Um, but you mentioned um, dead stock fabrics there. And I know you've recently started your own luxury upcycled denim line, which I'm very excited about. Um, and wondering kind of as a designer, do you see upcycling products as like a key comp a proponent, proponent of dealing with the issue of textile waste? And, and is this something that brands should be thinking about when they're designing as well? Uh, I mean, I think we're already there. Designers are already doing this. Um, I'm really happy that you like my little uh, sort of down pop up denim line that I created just out of uh, well I needed to use my creativity somehow and it's been a real labor of love to use I have quite a big um, denim archive 
and I selected some pieces and repurposed them by using uh, some fabrics, dead stock fabrics from uh, a friend of mine's label called Sewn, which is based here in London. And they have, you know, all they do is using up dead stock fabrics. They all, they're using a lot of linen as sustainable techniques. So it really worked hand in hand with her having her line based in that and adding the pieces, the vintage pieces with patchwork or appliques and it was really fun and playful i don't really like the world upcycling um what word do you use i i rather say it's repurposed okay, um and what i tried to do was just something really personal fun and but also beautiful and also something that could work with her quite high priced uh, women's items and you know she's a sustainable label so it was great but and i think Back to your question, on a serious note, uh, I do think if we, if we want to reduce textile waste uh, and the waste from the fashion industry, garment industry, uh, I really don't think we can focus just on upcycling. Uh, there's not enough of, of that, even if it, you, can, you can have that in all your collections as, a, as something that's really important for the moment. But I don't think we can only focus on that. Right. And, but also, on the other hand, we cannot also only be driven by economic growth. Um, you know, and also looking back history, um, repairing and repurposing, uh, it's not a new thing. It's been around for so long, longer than fast fashion, longer than me and you, you know. And denim is, is, is something that's always been patchwork and reused. It's, it's a workwear product, so. Totally. Yeah. And too, like for, for upcoming designers, I feel like um, repurposing product would be a good place to start because I know for me, I, I used to have dreams of starting my own denim line. I do not anymore, but I, don't, I absolutely do not want to, um, but uh, <laughs> the minimums were so high. So I, I, it was just impossible for me to even like get some. We don't need more product. No, we don't. We definitely don't. But you know, so I was thinking maybe this is a good place for upcoming designers or brands to start with. Um, but you know, I, like you said, like sustainability has to cut, it's, it's, it's really a mindset and like you were designing, thinking about every single little aspect and not every designer designs with sustainability or responsibility in mind. So I'm wondering if you can share with us what your, what your why was for, for committing to responsible design and kind of changing your methods and process. Um, I mean, I think we, we just, as designers, we need to create value throughout the life of a product. Uh, it needs to be to, worthwhile to, to keep it, to pass it on to someone or reuse it. Um, I mean, I think you just can't combine sustainability and profit. I think we need to minimize the resources we're using. And um, we need to think about what can we already from the start in the process, what can be repurposed? What can we reuse? Can I resell this? Is it good enough quality? Can it be rented rather than sold? Um, and also, it's, it's just a whole sort of rethink of, of the whole industry, the fashion industry, denim industry. Again, we need to think about what we do, be eco-creative. Yeah. And I'm, I, th I think slowing down the growth of our industry is needed to shift um, to a more circular uh, way of working. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just for design, I think, creating value. And value, and it's not about one you know, at once so wear and tear and throw away fashion. Because somehow we need to balance out the negatives on the environment, um, as well as thinking on the impact of social um, practices. We need to use sustainable practices, sustainable suppliers to have, you know, good working conditions. You need to think of the whole industry, not only using the new fibers and reducing chemicals, um, um, I think we need to have all that knowledge um, and the skill to be able to, to create something as you have to have that in the start of the creative process right. uh, rather at the, end, at the end. Totally. And, and just before we say goodbye to you, yeah. what is the name of your denim brand, Mal? And we have someone asking. Oh, it's not. I mean, it's basically something I... I do. I did for sort of a lockdown sort of project. 
Uh, I sell it through my friend's label, which is called Sone, S-S-O-N-E. And her brand is doing all these projects called Resone, where she takes in uh, young designers or she takes on like friends like me to do something for her stores. She does projects also in art, ceramics, not only fashion. So I, I sell some pieces through her store in London and I also sell them on my website, Marlin Denham. Amazing. I mean, it's a very, I mean, it could be something that I will keep doing. Uh, I'm hoping I'm going to do, it's not going to be seasonal. It's just going to work with probably what she's doing. She gives me her, her pieces and I can just play around. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much, Malin, for yeah, spending time with us. And Malin's going to hang out also to answer some questions in the Q&A right now as well. Um, so thank you so much again, Malin. And I will talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.